Dating in your 20s is great, but now that I'm in my 30s, I see that some things really do get better with time. What's up guys, it's me Lori, aka Loretta Child, the sex reporter, here to start objective conversations about sex. I turned 35 last month, which actually to me doesn't really mean much because I feel like you're only as old as you feel, but it did make me reflect on some things about what's sort of better uh, now that I'm into my 30s and I have more experience compared to how I was in my 20s, especially when it comes to just being out in the dating world or even being in relationships. The first thing that I've definitely noticed in recent years is that the sex has gotten better. When I was in my 20s, I was obviously less experienced and so were the partners that I hooked up with. What? All that means is that I spent a lot of my single time during that period just meeting a lot of people who didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know how to communicate what I wanted to my partners and I didn't know how to ask them questions in a way that made me understand what they wanted. Sexually, I would say I didn't really know who I was or what I stood for. And I guess because sex education wasn't really a thing in my household and it wasn't something that I really felt comfortable talking with other people about, even just friends, I didn't have like fully developed thoughts on sexuality in general. Because of that, I think I didn't really know how to respond to things or to stand up for myself. So for example, if a man wanted me to be both a freak and like an angelic virgin at the same time, I didn't recognize how fucked up that was and I didn't really know how to respond to that. I didn't understand all the social dynamics at play or even like whether I should feel flattered or angry when I got into sexual relationships with men who like wanted to own me. The second advantage I would say to dating in my 30s is a little corny but it's basically that I love myself. I've always been a pretty confident person but it wasn't until I was older that I learned to like truly love myself. And by that I specifically mean that I feel very comfortable just being alone. I have fully formed hobbies and I have solid lifelong relationships with friends and family that more than fulfill my life whether or not I'm in a relationship. Part of it is also moving past the point where I feel like I constantly have to prove myself to everyone and to pay my dues to, to earn things that I deserve because I've already done it and I feel very confident in my experience and my wisdom. That goes into like all of my identity, not just sexuality and dating, but like I have a career that I'm proud of and it makes me feel more comfortable in my own skin. All of that really means that I don't feel like I need someone to survive and be happy. I can date with a clear head and not look at people for what they can do for me to make my life great, but rather how they can add to my already great life. The third thing that's better is I also know much better how to love another person. I have always loved hard. Anybody who knows me for any length of time can tell you that. I'm kind of a woman of extremes. In my 20s, that kind of manifested as me thinking that I needed to like sacrifice myself and sacrifice lots of things in order to prove my love to someone or to feel love for somebody. I also kind of saw love as like mutual ownership if that makes any sense. I grew up believing that real love had to be ride or die, which I still do actually. I still feel like I'm a ride or die lover, I'm a ride or die friend and everything else. But in my 20s I think I interpreted ride or die as like being willing to suffer through literally anything that a person put you through because you love them no matter how much it hurts you. I've also always been very hardcore about loyalty and I think in my 20s I felt like love obviously came with loyalty. I still feel that. But back then I think I interpreted loyalty as being like a form of ownership as in you had to be like one with the person and you know my partner would have to want to be around me every single second of the day and want to talk to me all day and tell me everything and that if they didn't it meant that they didn't love me. I guess a simple way to put that is that I felt love was about codependence. Fast forward to my 30s and I think I've come to appreciate individuality and independence a lot more and I've learned that when I do love someone truly that I want what's best for them regardless of whether I am that thing that's best for them. I've also learned that real love makes you feel secure so you don't need to know where the other person is at all times. Um, you don't need to make rules and to control that other person and what they do with their time and how much they tell you because there's mutual trust. And lastly, in terms of learning how to love someone, I've learned that without trust, it's just not worth it. The fourth thing that I think is better about dating in your 30s is that I've learned how to pick my fight. So in my 20s, I don't know how else to put it except that I felt entitled to my anger. I felt that like if my partner did something to make me angry, it must have been because he did something wrong. I then also felt like it was necessary to fight with him about all the wrong things that he did until he stopped doing those wrong things. At the end of the day, what that turned into was just fighting a lot about everything, like every fucking thing. And it was just 
exhausting. In my 30s, I know myself a lot better. I know that some of my emotions are not necessarily triggered by anything that is like tangible and real, but more something that's just like hormonal. I know that sharing my life with someone means that I'm going to have to accept our differences and to compromise on them, and that not all those differences are worth fighting over. I also know that the things that are worth fighting over are definitely not going to be resolved with fighting, screaming, and accusing the other person of stuff. I I'm a better negotiator. So the last thing which I think is super important is that I know when to walk away. When I was in my 20s and even in my teens, I was so afraid of breaking up. Even with people that I didn't even really like that much by the end of our relationship, I just, I dreaded breaking up with people. Like I would be the one to want to leave, but just the thought of leaving and all that emotion just devastated me. I was afraid to lose people and I was afraid that if whatever we had came to an end that it would also erase all the good things that we shared. In my 30s, I realized that good things, amazing things, great things, the love of your life can come to an end and it doesn't mean that it didn't have a positive impact on you. Like what I see now is that not everything is meant to last forever and that's okay. I learned that you don't have to ride something out until it implodes and like the world is crumbling around you and you hate each other. You can end it when you realize you're just bad for each other and you're still on good terms. So I would love to know what you guys think. Is there anything that you've learned from past relationships that have made you a better person? Or do you feel like you're sort of repeating the same mistakes over and over again? Because I know I went through that phase of my life too. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I am a former Wall Street Journal reporter who writes about sex. And on YouTube, I start these open conversations just to get different perspectives and to show the diversity of experience that we have around sex dating and relationships. Because sexuality isn't always considered a family-friendly topic, which I'll get into in another video one day. Um, my videos can sometimes be age restricted or suppressed and don't get the exposure that other channels might get. So every share, every like, every comment really, really helps me. And I'm really grateful for those of you who have done that already. I hope you'll consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe link down below with the little bell next to it to get notifications of new videos. I also wanna give a shout out to my patrons on Patreon who support with as little as a dollar a month and really are doing awesome things because I'm using that money to commission work for my website and to get other people to contribute as well because I think it's important when talking about sexuality to have as many different perspectives as possible. Thank you guys for watching again and I will see you in the next video. Bye!